Welcome back. We're still watching tonight. And as we await the conversation starting in Kericho, we have the governor of Daraka Nidhi, Governor Muthomi Njuki, who is also the chairperson of the Health Committee of the Council of Governors. Good evening, Governor. Good evening. And great. We saw you at the event at State House, at the signing of the four health bills. And there's a statement you made that uh, you're okay with two bills. That is the Digital Health Act of 2023 and the Primary Health Care Act of 2023. But you had some reservations with the Social Health Insurance Act 2023 and the Facilities Improvement Financing Act 2023. What are those reservations and how do you correct them? I would not exactly call them reservations. Mm -hmm. During the consultation phase, we had consultation with the Minister of Health, and uh, we, I remember exactly, it was on 7th of um, September, mm -hmm. we formed a committee, technical committee for both teams right. to ensure that we aligned uh, both, we aligned both counties and the uh, MOH mm -hmm. on the issue that we thought would be contentious when it comes to implementing the law. Because right. all of us want what uh, the law that can be able to make uh, universal health coverage successful. Mm -hmm. What I meant is that 95% of our concerns were, were put into consideration in right. the final bill. Right. The 5% that was not really, uh, did not feature, I said that it can be cured through right. regulations. And that is, if you listen very carefully, I said, it, the, the bill may not be implementable, or the act may not be implementable in the state it is in, yeah. and uh, it is normal. I, I've been a member of parliament, I know, mm. that if you are to put to the finest details in uh, an act, the, the, the regulations that uh, enables an act to be utilized, then you'll be having bills of this size or acts of this size. Right. And therefore, most of those issues that do not so, so define to the comma yeah. on the exact route that should be taken in implementing an act are usually keyword through regulations. So tell me, what, what is that 5% that you're uncomfortable with with the bill as it is now? All right. In the, um, well, I'm not saying exactly we're uncomfortable. I'm saying it should, they should be considered before it is implemented. Okay. So One of them, that? if you look at um, the, the, the Health Finance uh, Act, mm -hmm. it, it has um, three, three uh, funds mm. that uh, it is not exactly saying how will, they will be speaking to one another. Mm -hmm. For example, we need to know the interface mm -hmm. between um, the, the, the Health Insurance Fund mm -hmm. The the chronic the chronical uh, sicknesses and the the emergency Emergency chronic and critical, critical yeah, and critical yes and um, of course the primary care yeah. uh, health fund, fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we we like to know the three how where do they interface that can be cured through regulations okay and at the same time um, in in the events that uh, one has to go all through all the three then uh, how what exactly are they supposed to do to be able to move from one to another. All right. And also the issue of the management. How will the three be managed mm. when it's come to management under one umbrella of one CEO? Mm. Uh, knowing that this, this, this is an office. Yeah. And sometimes even if you say we have independent offices that are actually independent those, and they, they will look independent, if the decision making at the end of the day is by one individual who is the CEO of uh, the fund, mm. then the decision is also coming to one person, as it were. Because I thought each fund has an administration team. Yes. Then you have the CEO of the authority. Correct. So you have a, an issue with that? No, we have, don't have an issue with that. Uh, the regulations should be able to cure that. All so right. That we do not have a form of, any form of delay mm. when a patient has to move from one form to another. And then you speak about the Facilities Improvement Financing Act. What is the issue? The Facility Improvement Fund, um, we do not have exactly have issues. Only that uh, 27 counties were able to pass, and mm -hmm. they have uh, they they already have uh, act in place that mm -hmm. are imp they are being implemented. County uh, laws. County laws. Right. And therefore, you know, when uh, national law is made, mm -hmm. most of the times, unless it is uh, explicitly explained, mm -hmm. it. Uh, Sub supersedes everything that has been done 
by the the legislative and the, and the county level. Right. And therefore, we needed um, that synergy uh -huh. to make sure that uh, those that have been passed by counties are not uh, efforts in futility. Okay. More or less, it should pro provide a guideline on how the county should be able to operate. So when they are doing the regulations, they should make sure because the, the states, the, the situation in counties are more, they are not exactly the same. They may be different. Some may be having more level threes la than uh, level than other counties. Okay. Some may be having um, two level five hospitals, okay. others have only one. Mm. And therefore we need to to make sure that we have a provision for the county FIF right. to fit into the, the national one. And uh, the same note that um, in the Health Insurance uh, Act, you know, some counties had already passed that and they have been in, 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 uh, in operation. Right. For example, recently, you know, Moranga passed the one of uh, Kangata Care. Mm -hmm. We know in the case of Mumarua. We have the one of um, Makweni, Makweni Care. But the contributions they are paying to the NHIF currently? No, yeah, but those, 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 those ones are there. Okay. And we wanted to ensure that uh, even as we, we transition into this, mm. then the regulation should be able to give exactly how do this transition because there are frameworks in place. Ah, okay. And okay. that is why we said regulations are very important for us to be able to make sure we have uniform implementation of this act in all the county governments. I'm, I'm just wondering because I've not had the advantage of looking at some of those uh, facilities, um, improvement financing acts of different counties. Yeah. But then the act assented to by the president talks about every other health facility retaining the charges that they collect, the fees that they collect. Is this okay with the Council of Governors that uh, hospitals are going to keep the resources they collect without that coming to uh, as part of one source revenue for the county? Oh, yes. Uh, that is the best thing that could ever happen to the health sector. Mm -hmm. Because um, in the health space, the voices of the sector itself, when it comes to the competing, competing needs mm -hmm. in the whole uh, devolved, all the 14 devolved uh, functions, health may not be having a very big voice. However, they are the ones who, sh who, who should be consuming most of the resources. Mm -hmm. They also generate a very uh, substantial, uh, I would say, not really income, but uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. However, when these funds are not reinforced and they find their way back to the CRF, mm -hmm. it is usually not guaranteed that that money will go back to the hospital. Right. Because of a lot of pressure for, for, from the public, because the roads are bad, others uh, want uh, pavements in their towns, others want uh, farm inputs, because that is what they are pressure. Because um, sickness is just individuals, you know, mm -hmm. so they are voiceless. Mm -hmm. So most of the time you'll find a situation whereby money has been collected from very poor patients in the hospitals, and they have paid through very hard means, including selling their property. Right. But instead of that money being put back in those health facilities to make sure they have better care, mm -hmm. it finds its way to CRF and it may, it may eventually end up in the county assembly because of the county assembly says you have funds in the CRF and our salary is late. You have no choice but to give them. Right. They may be requiring to do their development, maybe of a project. You may have to give it. As a governor, when you are under pressure also um, and the health workers are on strike <laughs> and they need money, you will make a choice whether to pay the health workers uh, and, and, and ensure that uh, they do not have much drugs to deal with in the hospital. But now with the ring fencing of those funds that are collected from uh, our patients, mm -hmm. it is possible to give hospitals autonomy. Okay. That it doesn't matter whether we have delay in uh, ex exchequer release. Right. We'll still be able to buy drugs. Okay. We'll still be able to buy the essential commodities in the hospitals. And therefore, Every day is a day of treatment without really worrying about the status of economy. So, so tell me, because part of the challenges that counties have been facing is the collection of their own source revenue. Yeah. If now this is a national law saying that the resources collected by a dispensary or a health facility or a health center uh, will remain there to be utilized based on the uh, priorities of the management of that facility, that means you're going to reduce on the own source revenue that you collect as a county. Are you also going now to revise the allocations to these hospitals downwards, or what are you going to do? First of all, allows me to tell you that uh, the facility improvement fund is not specific to a, a facility in the county. Mm -hmm. 
it is just called facility improvement fund because it's all the funds of the county that are put together as, as long as it has come from a, a facility in that county. Mm -hmm. In most cases, what has been happening is that uh, our level two and level three mm. collect minimum resources. Mm -hmm. Most of the, the collection is usually at level four mm -hmm. and level five hospitals. And therefore, the level two may not be collecting enough to sustain them. Mm -hmm. They'll have to rely on the level five and level four, and also on funding from the exchequer of the county to be able to survive, as mm -hmm. it were. Mm -hmm. So it is not possible that hospitals would get to that level where they collect money that is enough in building infrastructure, uh, paying for drugs, paying for health work, workforce, which is very expensive. But we are saying uh, retaining these this, uh, funds in the facility is a boost to cover the gaps that are usually clearing mm -hmm. in that sector. But it by itself may not be enough to make sure that they are completely mm -hmm. autonomous. It mm -hmm. will take a lot of years for that to happen. But it is going to cover the gap for what is normally a shortage, which is usually mostly the drugs okay. and uh, what we call non-pharmaceutical, non, uh, non, non, non which is usually... And, and therefore my like, question, yeah. if your level four hospital in your county yeah. retains the resources they are collecting yeah. and you do allocate them resources every other year, yeah. what are you going to do to the budget you're already uh, uh, sending to them in the subsequent years? Will you continue first, giving them the financing first, the same way? First, I want to affirm here that we, there's no county mm -hmm. that has been able to allocate what can be adequate to take care of uh, their, their, their medical needs. Mm -hmm. We are always having a shortage. The Abuja Declaration puts it at 12%. Um, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Rakanidi and other counties, we could be spending 35% of our budget, of the total budget on health. Mm -hmm. But in total, when you put the national and uh, the counties, we are at around 9%. Mm. And therefore, it's never enough. Mm -hmm. So allow me to say, that the facility improvement fund is supposed to boost so that we can uh, cover that gap okay. that has been very glaring, where you find our patients cannot be able to recover from our hospitals mm -hmm. because they do not have all the essential commodities that are required. Mm -hmm. But you cannot say that I will not be able to repair the, the theatre, I will not be able to repair, uh, for example, the wards, I need to ensure that uh, the diagnostic machines are working. Right. You know, so this money is supposed to make sure that at least we have the basics to be able to give okay. what you know as well. So, you, so you, you don't have to revise downwards. What you, you don't have to revise because that would be an effort. You know, you'll be you'll be watering down. Okay. It's like saying I'm going to give a boost to my family to ensuring that uh, I add more. And then when you when you you are almost getting there, you decide to cut off the rest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to be an effort in futility. Okay. Yeah, Governor. Something else you said at State House is about the medical uh, equipment uh, service or management equipment service. Yeah, yeah. Um, that there had appeared to be a direction the government was taking away from MES, but now you're saying that uh, the president should actually save the counties and not take it away. What exactly is going on? across the counties with this program that has actually been given a bad name by your predecessors? <laughs> uh, you know, before the MES, the health sector space in this country was uh, that of a third world completely. Mm -hmm. You know, you can imagine a situation where <clears throat> the basic diagnostic services like a CT scan mm -hmm. and um, even lab, you mm -hmm. know, like lab, lab uh, diagnosis, mm -hmm you find very old technology. Mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine uh, hospitals where you had to take uh, x-rays and develop them in dark rooms. Right. In, well, in the world is in digital space, mm -hmm. uh, where you can just have a scan and then you send it to a doctor who is not in the station. That is a thing of the past. The dialysis uh, queues in Kenyatta National Hospital used to start at three o'clock and people had to travel overnight for them to find a space at uh, six in the morning to be mm -hmm. seen at three o'clock in the evening. Now that with the um, MES, that became a thing of the past. However, mm -hmm. how this project was conceived was the problem. It was surrounded with a lot of mystery, mm -hmm. 
there was no consultation like the ones we are having at the moment with the UHC. Right. And therefore, county governments uh, had resisted them because they were not understanding, I mean, exactly how was it conceived, how are they paying for them. It turns out that um, counties are not, are not the ones who have been paying for this uh, for this um, equipment. Mm. It is the national government that has been paying for them. N and um, From which money? From the national government kitty. It was never deducted from the it counties? It was never deducted from the counties. If you look at um, the equitable ch share uh. for the counties, it has never changed now that uh, MES is there. What happens is that um, a figure just used to be loaded on top of a budget to show that uh, you have money being spent on you as a conditional grant. I've, I've never heard you say that. And now this I'm is, saying... This is your sixth year. You've never said that indeed it is the national government that was there. You've never asked me. That is a fact. Because all along the governors have been saying that it's actually deducted at source. That is what we were made to believe. For but six this, years you've been quiet, this, Governor. This, uh, you know, we became quiet because if you are enjoying facilities that you're not spending money on, <laughs> and it is serving the counties, where would you be worried? Because to Monainchi, there's no national money and county money. The money comes from one exchequer, which is the treasury. And therefore, whether it is paid by the national government, whether mm -hmm. it is paid by the counties, there's no patient for the county government, and there's no patient for national government. It's the same patient. So at, at this particular point in time, mm -hmm. after the expiry of uh, the, the MES, uh, definitely counties do not have any contract with the vendors. It is the national government that has contract with the vendors. As we have, um, we have an agreement with the national government mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the equipment have been provided for, provide a space, provide power, pay for the consumables that are usually utilized. Uh, right and ensure that uh, these equipments are working. Okay. On the other hand, national government has been paying for the leasing mm. and they have been paying for the servicing of the equipment. And to tell you the truth, if today you tell the counties take over these machines and mm. uh, pay the leasing, no county will afford them. One, the way they were conceived, we believe it was not competitive, as it were, mm -hmm. because no one knew uh, how they arrived at uh, the amount that was being spent okay. to, to do the leasing. Okay. Uh, where did you see a uh, national tender for leasing the equipment? It was not there. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we don't know how it was conceived. It was conceived. All we know for us is that the MES is necessary evil. <laughs> because now we are used to it, All right. we are enjoying it, uh, and uh, it's helping the service delivery. It's helping the service delivery. Okay, and that All is right. why we are asking the president now that this thing is in the in the limelight. Mm. Yes, um, it was conceived in not in a very transparent manner. But would you today say that I mean switch off all the the CT scans in this country because uh, we can no longer be able to pay for them as a national government? All right, it will mean you take back the queues to the Kenyatta National Hospital for dialysis, Governor. I have to thank you so much for making time for us. Governor Buthumi Njoki is the governor of the Arakanithi County, but also the chairperson of the Health Committee at the Council of Governors. Remember, the conversation has not stopped. We will be joining Trevor Ombija from Kericho County, where he will be speaking to the Cabinet Secretary for Health Affairs, that is Nahumi Chawafula, and the governor of Kericho County, Dr. Eric Mutai. Stay tuned for that, but this is what is coming up.